Hello, Louise. Hello, Louise. I greet the beloved church with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I'd like to invite those who can to open their Bibles. My brother, we're going to have read two verses, okay? One in the Old Testament and another one in the New. We're going to read Exodus. Exodus 12. Now Luke 23, 33. Exodus 12. Luke 23, 33. Now the blood shall be a sign for you on the house where you were. And and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I sh strike the land of Egypt. Now go to Luke 23, 33. And when they had come to the place called uh, Calvary. Then they crucified him, and the criminals, one on the right and and the other on the left. Lord, we we want to plead to you once again, pleading for your help, and ask that whatever is spoken here may come from straight from the throne of your glory that it may penetrate into our hearts and that man may not have a place in this place, in this pulpit and that everything that may come from human intelligence may, you may cause it to fall to the ground and only the voice of the Holy Spirit may speak to our hearts tonight. We we'll plead to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The praise group is going to be singing a song to the Lord.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. My beloved, I'd like to ask the projection to leave the text there of Exodus. We're going to go over there a few verses so that we may understand what the Lord has for each one of us tonight. So I'm going to ask you, my brother, that you um, go f from verse 3. Then we will go forward from there. We're going to do... Let me say a parallel between from the people of Egypt and the crucifixion of Jesus. I know that we have many visitors here. Uh, people left the Egypt and the Lord wanted to take uh, his people from the land of Egypt and this text uh, speaks of what preceded the departure of this people and there was there many things that the world needed to do in order for for to be fulfilled so that when the time of the departure arrived the people of Egypt the Hebrew people would who were the people of, of the Lord? They were have been captive of the Egypt, the Egyptians. They were slaves for more than 400 years. And the Lord said, "It's enough. It's time for me to take my people away from this place. I have a land prepared for them, far away from Egypt." And the Lord revealed to Moses to instruct the people and to tell the people how this preparation should should be how the preparation preparation should be for this departure and in the new testament we have seen jesus in the cross of calvary uh, on the cross of calvary crucified and a robber on his left and another robber on his right and what does he have to do? What, what does he have? The departure of the Egyptian people from Egypt with the crucifixion of Jesus. My beloved, there are so many elements about the departure of the people from Egypt, so many elements that if we compare, we will see that truly it's uh, all related. So let's do a parallel. The brethren may know the crucifixion, at least know, have an idea of the crucifixion. Jesus was crucified. So let's continue. When God revealed to Moses to depart, he said the following it is necessary. Verse 3. Uh, that on the tenth of his uh, month, even um, he's supposed to take a lamb. Who was the lamb on the crucifixion? Jesus. Jesus was the lamb of God. John the Baptist said, "This is the lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world." So there was a lamb at the crucifixion. Then we are going to jump to verse four, and he says the following. And if the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to him house take it according to the number of the persons. This month is the month in which we are praying for our neighbors. Maybe there is a neighbor here that was invited without even knowing, knowing this, but there was a price that was paid. This person that invited you, that person paid a price prayed, fasted, and presented your life in, to the altar of the Lord because only God can uh, give man what man is seeking. Man can seek for peace, 
anywhere in the world, but man will never find. Man will only be able to find his peace beside the Lord Jesus. And this neighbor, there was a neighbor in crucifixion? There was, of course. It was the robber. There were actually two robbers. And then there were neighbors of Jesus, and so there was. There was a neighbor there. So then he says the following. In verse 5, your lamb shall be without blemish. Verse 5 says, so in order for the lamb to depart from Egypt that God has revealed, had to be without any blemish, had to be completely perfect, that could not even uh, a spot, not a, not a single imperfection, had to be perfect. The lamb that was there in, in the crucifixion, that lamb had any blemish? That lamb had any sin? No. It was taken by the Holy Spirit in a, in a moment to be tempted, but even so, he remained faithful. He didn't bow to the traps of the enemy. He was the Father. He was God. He had everything that he, he wa could want beside the Father because he knew that whatever he came to do here was special. What he came to do here was for me and was for you. So he was without blemish. And the one that was on the cross was also without blemish. On verse 6 it says the following, Now we shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month, then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it, kill it at twilight. You know what? What time Jesus was crucified? At the three of the afternoon. So the Lamb of the Exodus had to be sacrificed on the afternoon. And our Jesus, who was on the cross of Calvary. He departed at 3 of the afternoon. What amazing thing, right? Isn't it, my brother? What the Lord wants to show to us in this word is that there is a project of salvation for man that was created all the way back in the past and from the foundation of the world, from the moment in which man sinned, God has been working for this rescue. And many times men with his incredulity, sometimes for man's weakness. He's not able to understand this great love of our God towards our lives. But man comes and dragging all the way from Exodus. So that we're going to see here the three phases, the project of God in the law with Moses in the illustration of Jesus in, in our days. Because what God wants is that these people who is here of about 100, a little more than 100 people, when Jesus comes in the clouds, He wants to call each one by their name. He wants to say your name, but in a, in a special way. He's not going to call Anderson. The Bible says that we have a name. Is written in the book of life and we don't know this name this is not our current name but when he calls us we will know we will know because when we accepted him as Jesus as our only and sufficient Savior he went there and wrote our name in the book of life and he didn't write Anderson Luciano Kathleen Isabelle he wrote a different name that we know, but when He calls us, He will be clear to us. But let's go back here. The seventh. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the house where they eat it. Wow. So the instruction was to pick up the lamb, sacrifice it, and the blood 
that the lamb had, pick up this blood and put it on the two doorposts and put the blood on the doorposts and some of the blood and put it on the two uh, and the lintel of the houses. Was there blood in the crucifixion? It was not little. It was an innocent blood. And where was this blood, my brethren? Where was this blood? It was on the doorposts and the lintel of their houses. It was in the cross of Calvary. On the doorposts and the lintel, representing the cross, the blood that was in the lintel and the doorposts of the people of Israel. This blood was also in the cross of Calvary. The innocent blood shed in favor of my life, in favor of your life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In, it, in that night, verse 8 says, And in that night, then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with uh, unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat. My beloved, that night, in that situation, the cross of Calvary, the flesh of our Lord Jesus was handed out, but there was there the fire of the Holy Spirit. There was a fire of the Holy Spirit in that Jesus that was there. And with bread, what bread speaks of, it speaks of the Word. Even in that situation of cross, he was beaten up a lot. He, was, he suffered a lot. But what came out of the mouth of our Savior, a wonderful word to one of those robbers, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And there they had to eat the meat uh, cooked on fire and with uh, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Why bitter herbs? The situation of them both was not sweet. The situation of these two was really bitter. <coughs> you can imagine a nail on the cross and and they with, without blame. And, and then if they feel with, with sin and many reasons to be there, <coughs> their souls were bitter. So then, the Lord gave an instruction to Moses to speak to the people. Do not any, eat anything raw. So the, la the lamb had to be cooked on fire. They could not eat anything that was raw or cooked on water, but cooked on fire. So the Hebrew people had to follow this instruction from the Lord. The lamb had to be cooked on fire, could not have been eaten raw. They had to eat the head, the feet, and all the entrails, and would leave nothing to the morning. Beloved, the instruction was to eat it, cooked on fire. Why? What does it have to do with the crucifixion? And not to eat anything raw. There were two instructions. One, to eat it, cooked on fire. And the other, not to eat anything raw. So there were two robbers. One, followed... Uh, the example of, that the Jewish people did. He followed the instruction of the Lord. For sure. These two robbers, they knew Jesus from uh, when he well, in his ministry. They probably didn't know him and just had not just met Jesus. They, I'm sure they knew Jesus. They may have even heard some sermon of Jesus. He may have seen Jesus hearing and have seen the wonders of the Lord. But when they come to that situation, one, one understood the project of God. And there, and look, 
He says the following. One says, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. So what did he do, my brethren? He he ate the the meat raw because he didn't understand the project of, the, of God, because he wanted the deliverance for this life. He said, "Look, if you are the Son of God, deliver us from here. Take us away from the situation. Put us back on the street. Deliver us from this condemnation." But the other that ate the meat cooked on fire, that understood the project of God, the other uh, uh, reproached, saying, I not a, a, a fear the Lord under the same condemnation, because we received what, what our deeds caused us to deserve it, but this one had not done, done anything bad. And then Jesus said, and said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One ate it raw, the lamb. He left the instruction of the Lord. He didn't understand the project of salvation, what Jesus came here to do. But the other, no. The other was understanding what Jesus came to do was able to eat the lamb cooked on fire inside of the instruction of what what was to be given to him, what was to be to the Jewish people. So now in verse 9 it says the following. Uh, and it has, don't leave anything for, to, for the following day, but whatever is left for the following day, we shall burn with fire. So the lamb was cooked on fire, but there were parts of the lamb that could not be eaten. What could not be eaten? The bones, right? How are you going to eat bones? So the instruction was the following. Whatever is left, don't leave it to the next day. The dawn of the next day, they should Pick everything that was left and burn everything. Don't leave anything. Don't leave anything left. Eat everything and burn whatever is left. And in the crucifixion, my brethren, you sh shall not leave anything to the morning. Have you thought, my brethren, if they let if the one uh, waited to repent on the following day? You think that? Jesus was going to have mercy on him and would say, hey, I'm going to save you because I feel like it. If he had waited a little longer, you think that he would have salvation? He would not have. This one would not have salvation. He could not have waited. The, the time was, was that time. Jesus was going to depart in a, in a few minutes. If Jesus dies and that man does not burn on the fire, what did he burn in in on fire? His own sin. He said to the Lord, Lord, we are here because we deserve it. This one has done nothing wrong. So he presented to the Lord his own sin. And he said, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm here because I know that I did evil evil, a robber, I was robbed. Lord, have mercy on me. Give me a chance. And the Lord told him, you will be with me in paradise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is how it happens. It is necessary for man to, to present his sin to the Lord and ask for forgiveness to his sin. And that's exactly what he did. He asked for forgiveness. And the Lord told him that in that same day he would be with him in paradise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
And here is represented those bones that have n no worth. It represents man's sin. It has no worth for man's salvation. It has to be burnt on fire and presented to the altar of the Lord, asking for forgiveness. And so you shall eat with uh, garments on your belt, on your waist, and which feet, shoes on feet, and ready to the, the departure because they were in the period of uh, uh, the moment of the departure so they needed to shoot on their feet because the, the travel was going to be long a belt on, on their waist and 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 a staff on their hand they needed to eat already dressed up and ready to go and when that man as forgiveness to the Lord and a repentant of his sin, had for mercy for his salvation. The Lord placed on him the shoes. He put the belt around his waist and put a staff on his hand. And he was ready at that moment to meet with the Lord in eternity. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the word says that they needed to eat this lamb in haste why does it did it have to be fast and there was because they were departing there was a judgment you remember the blood there was a judgment upon the Israel it was necessary that they ate in haste ready so that when the Lord said go march they would have everything prepared in haste so my brethren these two had no not much time left they had to hurry up. They had to um, take the advantage of the opportunity. It was a sinful life. They needed to be go in haste because none of them, them both would achieve salvation. But blessed be the name of the Lord because He, the Lord Jesus, had mercy on the one who had repented. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And now, my brethren, how about today? We came all the way from the past, from Israel. We stopped in Jesus a little bit in the New Testament. And how about today, my beloved? There's a people that is departing as well. You know, there's a faithful church that is departing from this world. Uh, on the sound of a trumpet, we'll meet with the Lord in the glory. And now I ask my brethren, are you ready? Are we inside of this message here? Is the lamb amongst us? There is a lamb. He died, but on the third day he resurrected. And he said he was going to come back to take his people to live with him. This is the promise of our God. He said that he was going to be with us. Is there a lamb amongst us, my brethren? Yes, there is a lamb amongst us. And who does the Lamb want to save? All of us, our neighbors, our co-workers, even those that uh, we may not like very much, the Lord will save them. Wow, we need to love everyone. So many times, He is without blemish, without, without sin, and He sacrificed Himself. My beloved, is there blood in our midst? The doctrine not only of the Maranatha Church, but there is a doctrine that comes from the Lord about the pleading for the blood of Jesus. There is a fear in the pleading for the blood of Jesus, which is in our midst through the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit of God. Because God inhabit our our homes it is on the doorposts now he inhabits our heart today he knocks at the door of your heart he wants to enter he wants to make an uh, he wants to inhabit your heart he wants to give a new life but he doesn't want to give a, a new life with financial prosperity sadly this robber wanted to have a riches for his life, salvation for his life. But 
the Lord wants to give you an eternal life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the word says that at that night they will eat the meat cooked on fire and with unleavened bread. My brethren, and that night the Bible tells us that we, the church of the last days, who are us, the church of Laodicea, us, the last church, will leave the period of the night. The night. The night speaks of darkness, spiritual coldness, speaks of everything that is not. It's not a fire. It speaks of the uh, heat of the Holy Spirit, the revelation of the Lord for our lives, the heat of the Lord on our hearts. Do we have this? The church has this? Of course, the church has it. And if you don't have, my beloved, if you have been walking in valleys, if you have been walking through um, scary places, maybe in addiction, maybe in depression, give your life to the Lord and trust in Him, and everything else will be, it will be due for you. With the unleavened bread and bitter herbs, Unleavened bread? Who doesn't like bread? Some people don't like to eat bread. I try to avoid eating bread, but bread is good. It tastes good. But also, there are the bitter herbs. The walk, my, my beloved, it has, it has good moments, which is the bread, which is Jesus now, made just revealing himself, giving us direction. Lord, the people of the Lord has a direction. They have food, but also has bitter herbs. And many times we go through difficult situations. And the word tells us that we, you will have afflictions, but be a, good, be a good cheer because I overcame the world. And we have this trust that the bread that came from heaven, who is Jesus, give us everything that we need. But it doesn't give us what we need physically, materially speaking. What he gives us is what our soul desires because our soul thirsts for the living God. Our soul moans. Many times you don't know why we are sad, why we cry. It's because our soul is moaning for the presence of God in our lives. And we beloved, if your soul is moaning tonight, if today there is something that is perturbing your heart. Open the door of your heart. Let Jesus inhabit your heart. Let Jesus live in your life. Let Him enter and, and dwell in your life. And I'm sure I'm sure of one thing. Your life will change. You're not going to be crying for just about anything. Much on the contrary. The, cry, the tears are going to come out of your tears. are going to be tears of joy tears a jubilation because the Lord has this to offer to our souls in the world you have affliction remember this those are the uh, bitter herbs but many times it's necessary to go through them so that we may have a, a spiritual growth so that it may be a moment of definition in our, in our, our lives and the word continues saying that we Shouldn't, shall not eat anything raw. Out there, there are many things that we're not even going to mention. We all know the word only on letter, just asking for money, trying to usurp the faithful and confuse the faithful. But blessed be the name of the Lord that we have cooked the lamb on fire. We have the bread of life. We have a revealed word to man's heart. Jesus is coming. Jesus will come soon. He promised that he's going to return and he will return. And many times we may think that is uh, it is a utopia, fairy tale, what people usually say. 
But there is one thing that is true. The moment in which we are living is a time called soon. And Jesus at the doors. And he is going to call his church, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In our midst there is the lamb that was cooked on fire and shall not leave anything for to the next day. Don't leave, my beloved, anything to the next day. You who entered here and I don't have assurance of a salvation, don't leave it for tomorrow what you can do tonight. Accept Jesus as our only and sufficient Savior. Trust in Him because today, still, your name will be written in the book of life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. One of those men understood the project of salvation of Jesus. And he said, Lord, forgive my sins. Don't leave it for tomorrow. Burn it today. Burn your sin today. Present to the Lord now, at this moment. The praise group is going to be playing a song. You can just play the, with the instruments without singing. And present before the presence of the Lord what perturbs you, what is causing you, prevent you from take a step towards the Lord. Present to the Lord, burn it on fire right now. And the Lord Jesus, He is here in our midst. He wants to hear from each one of you, from each one of us, because I'm included in this group. He wants to present to the, present to the Lord your sin and say, Lord, I want your salvation. Salvation, I don't want to leave this place anguished. I want to leave this place with peace, with your Holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Present before the Lord your anguish. Present the, before the Lord what has taken your peace away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's be in the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to the Lord. Let us sing. Hallelujah. Holy is your name, Lord. Place before the Lord your supplication. Place before the Lord your sin. Don't leave it for tomorrow. Make this choice today. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah.
just to uh, bring this message to a close, I extended too much. You already made a prayer, you offer your supplication, your s you offered your sin, put your sin in the presence of the Lord. I have the conviction by faith that in this prayer that you just made, asking forgiveness for your sin. Place in the Lord Jesus as your only and sufficient Savior. I am sure that this prophecy here, the law is given so that you're going to eat with your belt on your waist and with shoes on your feet and your staff on your hand. And tonight, the Lord has placed a belt around each one of us, just so you may understand. In the past, the Hebrews. They had garments, long garments, and they put a, a, long, a wide belt. And when they were in movement, and they were going to run, go to work, they would put the garments, they would tie it up on the belt so that they have more freedom of movement so that they were eating the lamb in this way with the garments around the belt ready that's what the Lord has done with you he got you ready and he also did another thing he said one thing get ready because your, my son is coming he put feet on your uh, shoot on your feet the belt speaks of of the Son of God and uh, the shoes speak of the compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ and the staff on the hand speaks of the direction of the Holy Spirit that conducts men, that conducts a faithful church to a meeting with the Lord Jesus. Today you have the means if you present your sin before the Lord you are ready to join these people that will inherit it inherit an eternity with the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This word, may this word find a place in your heart because it found a place in my heart because one day I made this decision. I, I, I'm sure of it. I'm here anxious for the arrival of my Lord. I want him to come quickly to take me away from this cruel world that only brings disillusionment and sadness. I'd like to invite the church to stand up. Uh, there's a spiritual gift, right? I'm sorry, my brother. There's a spiritual gift that needed to be shared. There's a woman, and when she came, she came wearing a wonderful crown of precious stones and she said with herself, wait a minute, I saw a woman. Oh, I understand. This woman came here and she saw the church wearing a wonderful crown of precious stones and she said with herself, I would like to have one like that. But I imagine that I... I can I'm imagine, I'm wondering how much would that crown cost. But at the end of the service, it was offered to her, this crown, freely. <coughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. So that the ones who give worth to the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, this crown that was given to each one of us, there. Surely you came here and you don't know what it is. It's the crown of salvation that church that the church has. It has no worth. You know why? Because it was already paid f for the faithful church in the cross of Calvary. So that it's given to us uh, freely. Amen. The precious cost that we don't have to pay anything. We praise the Lord. This tonight. Because once again we can glorify your holy name for everything you have made for us. In your name we say, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our eternal Father, and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit be resting upon the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. 
Beloved, the church may be seated. We've come to an end of another service of glorification to the Lord. I'd like to invite the brethren to come back once again on the service of doctrine on Tuesday at 8 o'clock at night. On Thursday, we have also our service of uh, adoration. We have early dawns on 6 30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, 7.30 p.m., another service of glorification. And on Sunday at 10.30, we have Sunday's, Sunday school, where we learn a lot, very enriching. We, are, we have been studying the book of Revelations. While others are scared of the book of Revelations, the, the faithful church rejoices because it's coming the, the moment of the arrival of the Lord Jesus. Uh, revelation does not scare the faithful church only brings joy to us and also Sunday night at 7.30 and you who, if you identify with any part of the service if the Lord spoke with you in any moment raise your hand we the ushers and deacons are going to be with, with you to pray for you and to complete what the Lord has already started in your heart Amen may the Lord bless, bless you peace of the Lord Jesus on Wednesday we have a meeting with the women on Wednesday at 8 o'clock at night. Thank you.